Simple, one light, backlighting. Don't you just hate it when guys who do this all the time tell you how simple it is? Well, this backlighting technique is very simple, but it requires that you throw away some of the rules that you learned in books and photography classes. Even back in the film days, the exposure table on the inside of the film box taught you to put the light source behind your shoulder so that it was lighting the front of your subject. If you look just below the table on the left, it also told you how to do backlighting. Open up three stops from f16 to f5.6 on a sunny day. That guy George Eastman was pretty smart for not having a computer around. I love to use the backlighting effect for the purity and dreamlike quality that it delivers every time. It allows me to create images that are as if I am experiencing my subject firsthand when I look at the finished product. I'm not a big fan of simple white backgrounds when coupled with butterfly or clamshell lighting arrangements. They feel too sterile to me. The backlighting keeps the attention on my subject and provides no distraction from the subject's mood and beauty. So one light, a few white walls or reflectors, a medium to long telephoto lens, and limited depth of field are all you really need to get the job done. And, well, of course, a beautiful subject is important as well. Remember, you can only get out of a photograph what you put in front of the camera. It also doesn't hurt that this technique can be done easily outdoors, but that will have to wait for another lesson. So we're going to look at two studio variations of this backlight effect. First is an arrangement I refer to as the box technique. You can see in the diagram that I have my model sandwiched between two white walls. It is important to note that the subject is recessed into the space so that there is a fair amount of white wall in front of her, which serves as reflectors to help provide an even light to the front of her face. One strobe is set up and aimed at the wall behind my model, Megan, and my exposure is based upon the light that is reflecting onto her face, not the light that is behind her. Next, you see a video clip of Sunny using the two walls as a posing prop. Once again, the light from behind provides a dreamy, soft light. Coupled with the lack of detailed props, the image is sexy, but most importantly, sells the model's personality and her ability to act. The second arrangement is the two reflector technique. You can see in the diagram that I have my model placed between two white reflectors that are about three feet in front of her. The reflectors also serve as gobos to help reduce lens flare since all of the light is being generated from the one strobe that is placed behind my Russian model, Nina. This arrangement is more versatile if you want your model to move or if you want to do a bedroom type setting and have your model working on a prop bed or platform. One of the key elements to exposing these images is that you must remember you need to expose for the shadows. You'll also note that when you try either of these two arrangements for the first time, that the image appears a little flat or lacking in contrast. I'm going to show you the solution to that in a moment. But as we look at the finished image of Sunny, you can see this technique is also very pleasing in black and white. Now I'm a believer of get it right in the camera whenever possible. To really make this lighting work, it requires a boost in contrast during your post-production steps in Lightroom or Photoshop. I also have a little edging trick that I frequently apply to these shots that I call a dreamy glow. So to make this work, we're going to take this image of Aaron, and the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we have some nice contrast in the brown panty set. So we're going to do an adjustment layer. We're going to bump the contrast to about 10 or 11. Then I want to go ahead and add a saturation layer to this image just for a small adjustment. Since she has these beautiful blue eyes, I'm going to pop my blue saturation up pretty aggressively to make sure that those eyes really jump out of the picture. Next, I'm going to go back to my original layer. I'm going to select my magic wand with a very low tolerance of about three, and I'm going to make sure the contiguous is unchecked, I'm going to select the background. Now you'll notice I did select a little bit of hair with the highlights, which I don't want. So we'll go ahead and we'll grab the lasso tool. We're going to hold down the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on a PC. We're going to select those areas to remove them from the selection so that we have nice clean lines around the frame of her body and her head. Then we're going to go back to our adjustment layers. We're going to create a curves layer this time and simply grab that curve scale and yank it all the way up to the left. Now you'll notice if you really want to write down the numbers you can but it doesn't matter. But what you'll notice is it's really made no change in the image at all. But this is where the trick comes in. We're going to go up to the filter gallery 
select blur, then we're going to add a Gaussian blur, but we're going to make it about 50 pixels. And you'll immediately see the dreamy glow. I'm going to turn it off and then turn it back on again. You'll see the dreamy glow that wraps around your subject. It's also a great trick if you have an image where you need to take a few pounds off a girl and you don't want to use liquify. So there you have it. My backlighting effect, my dreamy glow trick. For now, I hope you enjoyed them. Good luck and keep shooting.